one of the things that has been that you know people who go to your church um, know about you is that you you're a bit of an exercise. <laughs> yes, I, I, try, I try. You try, yes. Uh, but then last year you shared that during one of your early morning runs, early morning walks, yeah. that you were attacked by an Okada. I was shot at. Oh, you were shot at? Oh, I was shot at, yeah. Why did you know that you were shot at? I was shot at. It was a huge story. It was government officials. Everybody just reached out to me. Right. I was shot at. Um, normally, I would um, I would wake up maybe about 3, 4 a.m. I would take a walk and pray for about 2 or 3 hours before I leave next level prayer. So I was doing that on the road. Right. You know, I mean, I did it on the road because sometimes in the house you can get tired. Mm. I want to sit down on something, you know. Mm -hmm. So I did that on the road. And I, I was just very close on this major street. And this guy just said, give me your phone. And... When he said, give me your phone, you know, to be sincere, I didn't know why I didn't give him my phone. <laughs> because if I could think, I would give him my phone. But what I responded with was just saying, in the name of Jesus. And he just shot at me. Five minutes range. Boah! My head tingled. I mean, I ran. As soon as he brought the gun, I just turned my back. I started running. So when I got to the next... The two, three buildings beside, there was the, there was, um, the, um, the security guy. I said, did you hear the gunshot? Because I want to make sure I was not dreaming. He said, oh, he says the police at the gates that shot. Oh, they heard the gunshot. I said, please check my back. Am I bleeding? Because I said, maybe it was the adrenaline that knocked out the pain. He said, you're not bleeding. And, but my ears, if I had to go to the hospital because my ears, like, had a stretch. Right. And they were like, well, the, the, the bullet passed by my ear. And the vibration right. caused yeah. the stretch. And, and that, that was what happened. And, and, and just another testimony of the faithfulness, the grace, and the power of our Lord Jesus Christ mm. at work. Yeah. Sometimes the best comes out of your pain. Hmm. Sometimes hmm. the gold or the gift is in your mess. Hmm. And that's why sometimes when you go through pain and mess, what you don't want to do is to run away. Because in that pain, there is a gift. Mm. In that death, there is life. God told Paul, he said that my grace is sufficient for you. Mm. He said, my strength is made perfect. He said, my strength will come to full manifestation in your weakness. Mm. Next level came out of a place of pain. Really? Oh, it came out of a place of pain. What happened? I, I just gone through a season where people that were close to me, you know, from my perspective, because always stories have two or three sides. Mm. They betrayed me. I felt disappointed. I felt hurt. Mm. You know, there were things that they thought from maybe from their perspective mm -hmm. that were totally not true from my own perspective. And that drove me into a season of prayer. Mm. I literally spent maybe about 200 days in a year fasting. I literally spent because, because I was frustrated. I was broken. I was, I was broken. There's, there's a way... You know, all of us are different. The mm. way I was raised emotionally is that I kind of depend on people emotionally. Right. You yeah. know, some yeah. people, they don't have that kind of, you know, background. But that's the kind of person I am. And if the people you depend on, for some reason, betray, disappoint, lie, hurt, yeah. it, 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 I was being ripped apart. At some point, I could say I was suicidal. I could say I was suicidal. And, but the beauty of it is that when you come to the end of yourself, mm. and the truth is that the end of yourself has a beginning that is not that place. Mm. And I, I and how the next level start? I began to pray. I, I began to pray. And of course, I'm a pastor, and a lot of that situation had to do with the church. Mm. I began to pray. I gathered the leaders in the church for us to begin to pray in the morning. Ah. Because I was praying, and um, one of our leaders, and I told myself, why am I the only one praying about this? Mm. That let's gather together and pray. And we began to pray in the morning. And one of our pastors said, why are you only praying with the leaders of this particular church that you, where you're in? Why not pray with all of us? And someone says, why not just pray with all the members? After all, we are home. Then I began to pray with everybody. Then someone says, then the, it was becoming big. Someone said, why not put on social media platform? I said, okay, let's put on social media platform. And I, I remember the first time we were a thousand. I was like, wow, we are a thousand. You know, but now sometimes we have 500,000 people join yes. the prayer. Yeah. We have hundreds and hundreds and hundreds thousands. of thousands of people yes. that join the prayer right now. Yeah. So, you know, the biggest thing is that, you know, why some things can come from a place of God told me. Hmm. Some other things come from the fact that you've gone through a lot and there's a hmm. message in, there's a message in the mess.
There's a message in the mess. Yeah. Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ took on the issues that brought to him a woman that was, you know, that was literally caught in the act of adultery. Mm -hmm. The question was, where's the man? <laughs> Nobody knew what the man was. You know, they brought the woman and Jesus Christ was not afraid to, to implement standard with grace. Mm. You know, you, sorry, you know, sir. Sorry, you sir. Know, <laughs> you know, yeah, Jesus was not that, afraid to implement, implement standard with, with grace. grace. Because the law says stone her. You know what they were looking for? Mm -mm. If he had said stone her, they would have said, this is a mother, a killer, yes. a terrible man. That's what they were looking for. But if he didn't say stone her, he said, let her leave. You know what they would have said? They would have said, this guy is teaching against the law of Moses. It's not keeping the standard. So Jesus Christ, by the wisdom of God, looked on the floor and said, he that has no sin, let him throw the first stone. Yeah. Should, I, should I shock you? Mm. What Jesus was saying was this. I'm the sinless one. I'm the one that has the right to throw the stone. Mm. I refuse to throw the stone. Mm. Then who are you? I want to burst into thumbs. But no. <laughs> yes, yes. When Jesus yes, said, he that has no yes. sin, let him, let him throw the stone. Yes. He was saying that I'm the one that has yes. the right to throw the stone. But he I was saying to them that all of you are sinners pointing another sinner. Thank you for joining our YouTube channel. I know, I hope um, you loved that video. You connected with it. Don't forget, please subscribe. Please like. Please share with your friends and family. Please comment. We love to see your comments. And to see the full versions, join our community right now. All past episodes on watch.withtoday.com. Let's be human.